Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm painting macaron mouse <laughs> and I'm sipping on some vanilla chai tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks so let's get painting and let's get sipping all right, so for the materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, fire red, deep yellow, cobalt blue, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush. And I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up too if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and chalk and all that good stuff is in there. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. What I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna mix myself a medium gray color that will be the majority of the uh, color that I use. So I've already pre-mixed a little bit so you can see where I'm headed. So it's kind of a warmer gray. So I'm gonna use quite a bit of my brown paint quite a bit of my white paint and just a little bit of my black. And then I just start spinning it together. Let me turn this so we can see it better. And then I just start spinning it together. So what I'm going for is just a medium warm gray type of color. I know that it's gonna get a little bit darker when it dries. So I wanna make sure that I have it a little bit lighter than I ultimately want it on my canvas. So that way when it dries, it will, um, it will adjust accordingly. And that's looking pretty good to me. So once you've got the color that you desire, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just kind of wiping it off on the side of my palette and I'm gonna pick up with dirty with my dirty brush, I'm gonna pick up white paint. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the painting process at the top of my canvas with that custom gray plus white on my brush. And then as I come down the canvas, I'm going to be now picking up the custom gray that I made. So I won't pick up white anymore. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pick up the custom gray. And what'll happen is I'll get these colors to just kind of blend in with one another. And that'll give me a nice natural gradient as I'm coming down that canvas. And it'll allow me to have it appear as if there's a little bit of a light source up at the top of that we'll call it a wall for lack of a better terminology here. And then I'm just gonna carry this gray for the majority of the canvas all the way down to the bottom. I'm just using a left to right brush stroke. Because I'm using a lot of white within my um, paint mixture, I'm getting good coverage. So I most likely will not need to do a second coat, but you might find as you go through this painting process, depending on the type of paint that you're using or the color that you've chosen to do, you might find that your paint ends up a little bit streaky or it's not blending the way that you want it or it's not covering the way that you want it. And in that case, what you'll wanna do is just do a second coat on it. Let the first coat dry and then come back and just do a thin second coat and that will take care of any of that um, 
any of the streakiness or any of it if it didn't cover the way that you had anticipated it to do. So I'm just bringing this all the way down, just making sure that I've got um, the majority of the canvas covered. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up doing a little bit of a dark area where I'm gonna call it the wall is gonna meet the surface that our cookies and our mouse are gonna be sitting on. So I'm just about there making sure that I got all the way down, get a good coverage on in through here. And then without washing my brush, I'm gonna be picking up a little bit of black paint. And that's going to um, allow me to get a little bit of a dark area where the wall meets the surface of um, whatever it is they're sitting on. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick up, I have my dirty brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black paint. You don't need a lot. And I'm gonna find about quarter way up my canvas. So to find that, you can visually kind of eyeball the halfway point and then go about halfway between that and the bottom of your canvas. Make yourself a little bit of a marker. Use your brush as a measuring tool to kind of spot where that marker is and then come over on to the other side, make yourself another marker, and then you're just gonna swiftly kind of blend these in together, get them to go across, and what I do is I just kind of keep going back and forth and let it blend in with the wet paint that's next to it. I don't go very far away from that um, original line, so that way the dark area just kind of really remains in the background, you know, off in the distance and kind of out of focus. If you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, just give it a good squeeze in your paper towel and that will allow you to just kind of go nice and softly across your canvas, allowing you to have the quantity of paint that you want. And don't worry if this doesn't blend perfectly. We're gonna have a lot of objects in front of it that will steer the eye away from this area. Um, again, if you needed to, you could certainly do a second coat, but a I would not worry if this is not perfect. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be utilizing our chalk for the next step so you can put your large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our cookie stack and our mouse and the spoon. I, oh, we're gonna use our chalk. I do wanna recommend though that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. It's very much easier to draw on dry canvas than it is on wet. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer to get it dry that way. So I'm going to be making some markers um, so I can kind of give myself equal distance from my cookies so they're kind of uniform in looking and then I'll show you how I'm going to shape them. I'm going to do my cookie stack first and then I'll do the mouse. We're not going for any fine-tuned detail here. We're just going for some basic shapes that we'll be able to color in during the painting process. So when I was studying the macarons, <laughs> the, when I was eating them, <laughs> I noticed that they're about twice as wide as they are tall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make myself markers of about three inches apart up and down my canvas, and I'm gonna have the center of my stack is gonna be about in the quarter about a quarter way over from the right or a quarter way over um, from the center. So to find where that quarter way part is, you can kind of just eyeball the center of your canvas at the top and you're gonna go about half the distance between there and the edge of your canvas. So somewhere in this vicinity. I'm gonna make my first marker uh, almost an inch away from the top of my canvas, somewhere in through there. Then I'm just going to go about three inches below each one of these marks and just make another mark. This is gonna give me pretty equal spacing between my cookies. Um, but the bottom one, I have a little bit more than three inches. So I'm gonna do something similar to what I did at the top where I'm just gonna leave myself about an inch available at the bottom. So I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six cookies. You could certainly have two stacks. You could have as many as you want. So now that I know that they're gonna be about three inches high, I'm gonna need them about six inches wide. So that'll take me on my canvas about an inch away from the center of my canvas and about an inch away from the right-hand side. These cookies have a top and a bottom to them and I don't want them to all be perfectly straight. So I'm just gonna, as I, as I make the, the shape of the cookies in my head, I'm gonna stay about an inch away from the edge over here 
and then on this side I'll be a little bit to the right of my center. I want them to be kind of crooked and have some natural kind of shape to them so I'm not going to do them too perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the top cookie and I'm going to just give myself a couple of oval type of shapes. One for the top, something like this, and then I'm going to go a little bit away from that one and do another one for the bottom section, bringing myself to that second marker in through there. And then what I do with this center section is I'm just going to give myself two little curved lines close to the edges. And then I'm going to repeat that for every cookie. So the next one, I and of course you can have them tipped so they don't all have to be perfectly aligned. So maybe on this one, I've got this one maybe tipped like this and I've got it coming out in this vicinity, come a little bit below that, make myself my second piece of my cookie like this. And of course, like I said, they don't have to be perfect. And then I need to give myself that center area, something like this. And then I'm just gonna repeat, keep repeating that process. I'll do this one maybe, maybe this one's got a little bit more of a, maybe we're gonna make this one come down a little bit like this so you can have different spacing between them and then I'll go ahead and do this one maybe at a similar angle as that top one and again I'm just doing these kind of long oval type of shapes and then going ahead and giving myself that little center surprise part in the middle of these cookies. These cookies are very delicious. But if you have not had one, you should have one because they're very delicious and they come in all different flavors too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do um, this one in through here. And again, watching my marker down here, I'm gonna give myself, we'll have this one maybe coming out like this. Then we'll do another one in through here. And then we'll connect those center areas, something like this. And of course, some of the centers are going to look like they have more stuff in them. You can really just have some, some fun with how much stuff you put in the middle of your cookies. <laughs> so something like that. You're going to have another one coming out in this vicinity. And again, they don't have to be perfect. I'm just having some fun making my cookie outlines like this. And then I've got my final one down at the bottom in through here and they might have gotten a little bit wider than I had anticipated which that's okay some can be bigger some can be smaller actually I think I want this one to be a little bit smaller bring that one in just a little bit um something like this I think this is and maybe this one wants to go out see I slid it over to the left a little bit more than I wanted to that's all right though so we can do this that's what chalk is great for you can always uh, my, oops, I'm doing my centers first. You can always modify the edges however much that you want to and make them different shapes and all that good stuff. So if you want to pull one out, like I want to pull that one out a little bit more. There we go. That's good. All right. So that's going to be my outline for my cookies. And of course, you can adjust yours as much as you want to tip them as much as you want. Uh, for my mouse, I'm going to do um, a really fun just illustrative type of body and head. I'm not going for photorealism on either of these elements, so we're just gonna have some fun with this. So what I'm gonna do for my mouse is I'm gonna have them kind of sitting hold, holding this big spoon. So I'm gonna do the body first. I'm gonna be about, I would say about halfway between my cookies and the edge of here. So somewhere right in this vicinity, this is gonna be the bottom portion of this shape that I'm gonna be making. Um, the top of it is going to be I would say right about in through here, so maybe about four or five inches, something like that. And I'm going to give myself like this kind of a teardrop type of shape where it's more narrow at the top and it kind of bubbles out at the bottom. This is going to be his body. <laughs> so we're just going to have, we're going to have fun with how that, how that works out. Then I'm going to start the head with a circle. So I'm just going to go from the top of here, give myself this little bit of a uh, a circular type of shape something like this will work and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a big old ear on here so I'm gonna bring this ear out like this I need to put a little face or a little nose area so I want him to kind of be looking like he's looking up towards the top of the stack so I'm gonna just kind of come in this area and give myself just one little um, bump out like that and then another one that's a little bit smaller so something like that we'll do that 
for me. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little chef's hat on it. So I want my chef's hat to kind of look like it's um, on t uh, over the head a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of go from this little nose area, make a little ripple line to the ear. And then I'm just going to give myself this fun hat shape on the top of the um, head, bringing it right about halfway almost halfway down the ear back here. And you can, if you want to, to make your visual um, way a little bit easier, put a little bit of water on a brush and get rid of any lines that might be distracting for you, any chalk lines that might be distracting. So that way you can have a nice good visual um, on, the entire, um, on the entire mouse. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little tail down this bottom left hand area. We'll be making the tail wider as we go through the painting process, but this will just kind of get us started. Before I put the arms on, I do want to put my spoon on so I'll have a place, I'll know where I want those arms to um, reach. So I'm going to have my spoon coming down to the same level as the bottom of the body here. So I'm going to go about half the distance between the body and my cookie and that's where I'm going to put the bottom of my spoon. I want my spoon to be going up in a diagonal. So I'm going to, you can simply draw a line from however tall you want it to be. So if I want my spoon to come up in this direction, I'm just going to draw myself a diagonal line and make it as tall as I want. And just to give me that structure of how to build it. And then for me, I remember the wooden spoons from my mother when she was baking when I was a young child. I think I got in trouble with a wooden spoon once or twice too. But um, So the, the wooden spoons, I remember, they get a little bit wider at the bottom and then they have a circle type of um, top to them. So I'm gonna come down here and make this bottom a little bit wider. And then as I come up, I'm gonna make it a little bit more narrow in the neck of it. And then I'll just kind of give it a big um, oval type of shape up in through here. So that'll be my shape of my spoon. Now all I really need to do, I don't need to do much for my arms. I just want to give myself kind of a couple of markers where I want them to come out of the body. And same thing with the feet. I'm really just going to kind of give myself a marker where I want a foot to come out there and maybe a little bit of a foot to come out on the other side. That's all I'm going to be doing for the outline. We're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so you can put your chalk away. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our cookies and our mouse and our spoon. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are um, blue, red, yellow, green, white, brown. So all the colors except for black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the top of my cookie stack. You can make your cookies whatever color you want. Macarons come in every color of the rainbow. They can be light colors, they can be dark colors, they can be neutral colors, they can be marbleized colors, they can really be any colors that you want. So I'm going for kind of like a bright pastel-y colors for mine. So the first one that I'm going to do at the top is going to be blue. So I'm going to take um, some of my cobalt blue and add a little bit of white to it. So I have this lighter version of cobalt blue that I'm going to be using as the base color for my cookie. You could again make your cookies whatever color you want. That's the beautiful part of these delicious cookies is they can come in so many different colors. You could even add a little, actually I think I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this as well. So it's more of like a aqua type of blue. So I just added a tiny bit of yellow to it. See, you can make colors on the fly. I'm thinking that I wanted it like a little bit softer looking, so that works for me. I added a tiny bit of, ooh yeah, that's a pretty color. So it's like a light teal aqua kind of blue. So there we go, that's gonna be my blue color. And I'm just gonna paint the cookie in with this color. You can do more than one cookie in the same color. You can do them all the same color, you can have every single one of them a different color, whatever is speaking to you. I'm going to um, paint right over my chalk mark because I know that I don't really need it. The, um, the top portion of the cookie and the bottom portion will provide me with 
the guidance that I need for that center part. So if you um, paint right over your chalk mark for um, the division of the center of the cookie to the edges of the cookie, that's okay because you'll be able to identify it later. And then when I get to that next cookie, you can make it overlap a little bit if you haven't already had that type of um, outline to do so. That little white marker at the top right here, I'll erase that with a um, with some water in a minute. So that's the only blue cookie I'm doing. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go in for the next color cookie that I'm gonna be doing, which is going to be um, I'm going to have like a brown colored cookie. So how I'm going to make my brown, I'm actually going to make like um, a, a ch I would say like a milk chocolate kind of color. So I'm going to use my brown plus a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red and a little bit of white. So what this is doing is it's going to take my brown and make it like a little bit richer of a color. So I'm in essence kind of adding orange to because red and yellow makes orange so i'm adding orange or, or a shade of orange to my brown and that's going to allow it to make it look nice and like milk chocolate to me <laughs> so that's the color i'm doing my my a couple of my cookies so i'm taking this this color and i'm oops i'm going to be coloring in this cookie in here i'm also going to be using this as the base color for my um my wooden spoon so if this color doesn't resemble wood to you then maybe you make yours of a different shade that's going to be a hundred percent up to you i'm going right underneath that cookie and providing myself with a little bit of dimension with the um with the the blue one sitting on top and kind of overlapping the brown one a little bit and then I'm going to do another cookie with brown also, so while I have it on my brush, I'm just going to go right ahead and do the um, the other cookie that I want to be brown. So, or actually, no, I don't want another cookie to be brown. <laughs> I changed my mind. I want two red cookies, not two brown cookies. I do want the spoon to be brown, though, so I'm going to paint the entire spoon with the brown color. So again, just use, utilizing this as my base color for my spoon. We'll put all kinds of fun details um, on it later, but right now this will just get us started and give us a nice base for it. And when you get to the, um, the mouse's face with this brown color, if you accidentally bump into it, that's okay. I'd rather you bump into it than to leave a weird space between the mouse's head and the spoon that's unpainted. So bump into it if you want to. And if you, there's um, chalk mark that you don't want to paint over, just leave it. And then once your paint dries, you can, oops, my spoon just grew a little bit. Um, once the paint dries, you can just erase it with water. So I'm just coming all the way down to the bottom in through here. And then the next color that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have some bright pastel red cookies. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pre-mix myself a uh, a pretty red color. <laughs> it's just going to be red with a little bit of white in it. So I wash and dry my brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a tiny bit of white paint and mix it in with some of my red. I'm really just looking for something that is not super duper red but it's got um, some good depth to it so I'm going for we'll call it a dark pink type of color so that's about where I'm headed with this and I'm gonna do two cookies with this color so I'm gonna do this one in through here and I'll also do the bottom one um, that's anchoring our stack down at the bottom and you might find that your coverage is not perfect depending on the type of paint that you're using you might find that um, the colors are streaky on this first round don't worry about that because we have highlights and shadows and all kinds of little details that we're going to be putting on these cookies in a future step so if you if your coverage is not perfect don't worry about that at all and again no need to feel the stress of covering up all of your chalk mark because that will be covered or we can get rid of that with a little bit of water as well. This is just intended to be a nice fun painting. If we make, you know, things not perfect looking, that's quite all right. So the bottom one down here, I'm also going to be using this fun um, dark 
pink or a light red kind of color that we've created and just bringing it all the way to the edges and then just going to make sure that I have the whole thing colored in. The, um, the next colored cookie that I'm going to be doing is a green cookie. So again, these, these cookies can come in all different colors. They can, the colors can represent the flavor or they can just be decorative type of elements. So if you want yours to represent a lemon flavor or a lime flavor, you can certainly make them according to the, the colors if you'd like to do that. But I'm gonna wash and dry my brush right now and I'm gonna make myself a green color. So I'm gonna be using green, a little bit of white and a touch of yellow. So this way the um, green becomes more of like, a, if I was to just use green and white, it would be a, almost a little bit too soft of a green for me. So I wanted to add a little bit of that vibrancy. So that yellow helps to add just a teeny tiny bit of vibrancy into my shade of green. So I'm going somewhere in through here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to take that green and I'm going to color this cookie right in here with this green. Yeah, I'm digging that color. And of course, you can certainly shift your color if you want it to be lighter or darker or a different shade. Feel free to do so. Again, these col these cookies come in so many different flavors and colors. It's it's quite fun to see them in a bakery when they have all of the different varieties stacked up next to each other and it's almost like I don't know. It reminds me of candy when you when you see them all next to each other when they display them with all the different kinds of flavors because they're so colorful. And then my last cookie that I'm going to do is going to be right here and it's going to be a yellow color. So I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm going to be using my yellow and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of white into it. I don't want it to go too, too light, but I definitely want there to be some good opacity to it. So I'm using a little bit of um, white in the mixture as well. So that's going to be my yellow color that I'm going for. That's looking pretty to me. And so that's the one that I'm going to be using for this cookie in through here. And again, don't worry if you don't get perfect coverage because we'll be doing all those other elements on top of it. And then the only other thing that I have to um, color in at this point for the base coat is going to be my cute mouse. And for my mouse, I'm just going to be using a light tan color. So that way, I, I want my mouse to be pretty light in color. I want it to have the pink little nose and the pink little ears. And I think that the light tan will be a great base for um, for those elements. And that will help us to kind of get the color of the mouse to be a little bit different than the color of our background, which will give us good contrast and get them to pop out a little bit more. So I've got my yellow cookie done. I'm gonna wash and dry my um, brush and I'm gonna make myself a light tan kind of color for my mouse. So I'm gonna be using just brown and white. So this was the gray that I had for my background. I want it to be a little bit different than that. So I'm gonna utilize my white and just kind of spin it around in my brown. And I want it to be pretty light. Um, I do know that I'm gonna to wanna to put some, some lighter tones on top of it. So I, want, I don't want it to be all the way white, but I definitely want it to be a little bit different than the gray background that I used. So this is looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna utilize this as my base coat for my mouse. So on my mouse, I, I know that I'm gonna be doing all kinds of other details to um, bring him f into full, full shape here. But when I get to areas like the hat or the hat versus the face or the ear versus the hat, I'm gonna leave a little bit of my chalk mark showing in those areas where I feel it may be necessary to keep that outline for future reference. So I'm going to just kind of bring my paint right up to um, the chalk line, but I'll leave it in, in a couple of what I'll call important areas for this step. But like this top area, I can bring my paint all the way to the, um, to the chalk and get that chalk to disappear. But where it's hitting this ear in through here, I'll leave a little bit of that showing. And then down in the body, 
I don't really need any of this to, to be um, showing, so we can just kind of color that all in. And I'm just using that light um, brown, or we can call it a tan, I guess, if we want to get technical. I'm just painting this all in and through here, and his chest just got a little bit bigger. That's all right. He's eating lots of cookies. He can have a, a nice, robust body in through here and then just coloring it all the way to the end. I'm even going to give the feet and the arms um, and the tail the same color as a base because it's going to work really well with the um, colors that I want to finesse it with and um, have as the ending color. I'm going to make my tail a little bit wider as it hits that body and then just kind of bring it in a little upward motion. And then on the feet, I'm not a uh, mouse foot expert so I'm just gonna kind of give these little kind of curved toes at the end nothing really fancy at all just little kind of curved toes and same thing with the arms um, I'm gonna have this bottom one is gonna be the one that's in front of the um, of the wooden spoon so I'm just gonna kind of give that little wrist and then I'll give these a um, couple of little we'll call them mouse fingers <laughs> I'm sure that's what they are. Mouse fingers like this. And then this back arm, I'm just gonna kind of put a little arm in through there. Maybe his thumb is here and the other fingers are coming out on the other side over here. And that's all I'm gonna do for my outline. We're gonna utilize this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the shadows for our cookies. <laughs> so this is gonna be shadows on cookies, in cookies, under cookies. <laughs> so it's gonna be all the dark areas in the cookies. So we're gonna be putting shadows underneath each one cast upon whatever else is underneath it. We'll be putting shadows underneath um, or in between the two pieces. There's also what's referred to as legs on macaron cookies, which is on the, on the part of the cookie at, by the edge, it gets all like rippled when it's baking. Don't ask me how I know that because I'm not a baker, but I know that they're called legs. <laughs> so we'll be putting those in with little bits of shadows and we'll be starting them with shadows. So I'm gonna be using primarily brown and black during this process, but if I need to use water, I'll let you know to make sure that I have good fluidity, or if I need to pick up any of my original color, I'll let you know too. But I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown and black on my brush at the same time. I like to use the combination of both of those colors for shadows because I know that the, my brown is nice and translucent and it gives me some good, um, some good fluidity. So I'm gonna start right underneath it, underneath this first one, and I am just utilizing kind of a, a soft touch in through here. I don't want my, my shadow underneath to be too firm of a shadow, so I'm just gonna kind of let it um, be soft in the, in the surface that it's sitting on. As I do this shadow coming out over here to make it look more three-dimensional, I'll pull that shadow out just a little bit further than the cookie. I'm covering some of this red area because I don't think it I think my brush got away from me when I was painting that part. So we'll just cover it up with a little darkness. So that's gonna be my shadow underneath there. And then I'm just gonna continue up my cookie. So a little bit of um, black and brown on here. I'm going in for the center part first. So what I'm doing is I'm in essence gonna kind of underline that top portion of the cookie, all the while knowing that these cookies are kind of rounded. So I'm go I want to, um, communicate that to the viewer. So you'll see a lot of time I'm gonna be using this curved type of brush stroke in order to um, explain to the viewer that this is a round type of cookie. I am gonna pick up some of my back, or some of my original color, so this is gonna be that dark um, pink color that I just picked up so I can get this to just blend in a little bit more in through here. Now I'm gonna just pick up a little bit more of that black and brown and I'm gonna put the legs on my cookie. So right a, a little bit away from the edge of the cookie, I'm just gonna do this messy kind of um, polka dot type of um, brush stroke. You can pick up some of the original color if you want to. I'm just really doing um, messy messy polka dots to start the process of the legs on these 
macaron cookies. So it's right close to the edge, just these little polka dotty type of dark spots. I'm gonna, I still have some dark color on my brush, so I'm putting um, it right below my yellow cookie. So this is gonna be the shadow of the yellow cookie onto the red cookie. So this is similar to what it would do on the, um, on the surface that it was sitting on. So I'm just providing myself with that little bit of information at the top of the cookie. And then I'm gonna just work my way up. So black and brown going to my yellow cookie right now. So I'm gonna go right underneath the, the lid of my cookie. That'll be my, my term for it, the lid of the cookie. And then I'm gonna just kind of bring this in a curved type of manner and adding a tiny bit of water onto my brush to just get a little bit more fluidity on top of this yellow. And then again, I, right now I'm going into my um, yellow color on my dirty brush just to get this to, to blend out just a little bit. So it looks nice and natural as it's sitting in between these, these cookies. Now I'm gonna pick up that black and brown and give myself the legs on my cookie on the edge. So just kind of dotting away in a messy fashion right in through here, doing the same thing on this one. And you might find that you have a more advanced technique than I do, but this really just is a nice, um, fun way to go about it. So I'm onto my green cookie. So against brown and black are on my brush. Oh, I need the shadow underneath my green cookie. So the shadow underneath my green cookie onto my yellow cookie. So again, I still just have brown and black on my brush and just making it soft edges um, going into that yellow, just really lightly touching the canvas. And then I can go ahead and start in on my, on my shadow underneath my green cookie lid. <laughs> and then just bringing it from the edges and maybe bringing it in a little bit of a curved way. So this center area would be shadowed by, by the top portion. I don't feel like I need to pick up any of my green to get that to blend in. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty good on that one. So just gonna add some more brown and black to do the legs of my cookie. So just kind of dotting kind of close to the edge where it's going to, um, the, where it meets the inside of the cookie, somewhere in through here, giving those kind of chaotic little dots then I'm gonna use my brown and black to put my shadow underneath my red cookie. And it's just kind of like rinse and repeat. You just kind of follow that same process through the entire way. You might find, you know, at some parts that you're like, oh, I think I put too much on here. Well, if that's the case, just kind of let it dry and then you can come back in and um, put more of that base color back on it if, if you need to. So just reloading my brush with the brown and the black going in for my this red cookie in through here or dark pink cookie whatever you want to refer to it as and then just kind of outlining the that the lids <laughs> the top and the bottom and then giving this little curved type of um, interior to give that shape and again just going red and um, brown and black to start the leg process of my cookies so something like that, and then again, in through here. And again, the more kind of chaotic and messy you make it look, the more natural it's going to look. So that that kind of um, speaks to my painting style as well, but it also um, allows things to look a little bit more natural. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the shadow underneath my brown cookie onto my red cookie, and wherever it lifts off, like it's lift, lifting off right in through here, just stay on your cookie. Don't You don't need to go into the background. So I'm staying on my cookie, something like this, and just giving it a nice soft edge as if it's just the shadow is just merging into that beautiful cookie. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So brown and black, up at the top and through here. I can tell you I'm really getting hungry for cookies right now. <laughs> perhaps perhaps I will try and attempt to make, uh, no, I'm never gonna attempt to make these cookies. My husband might, he he really loves these cookies. So perhaps someday he will he will figure out a way to, to make them, but I hear that they're difficult cookies to make. So I'll stick with my peanut butter and chocolate chip cookies and sugar cookies. Those are the easy ones. So we've got the dark in the middle there. And again, I'm still just using black and brown on my brush. 
putting the um, shadows in the legs of the cookies in through here and then going ahead and doing this one right here and then I just had my last blue cookie so I got to put my shadow underneath so again just my black and my brown and you might find that you, if you want a more dramatic shadow perhaps you use more black if you want it more subtle maybe you did lighter cookies maybe you want yours more subtle so maybe you use more brown on in your um, shadow type of area so that's going to be steered by probably the the darkness of your cookies so you can certainly or your visual preference one of the one of the two and then once i've got that on there i'm going to go ahead and do my blue cookie so brown and black i am doing the area underneath the lid of my cookie something like this and some of these cookies can have a lot of filling or they can have just a little bit of filling the filling doesn't even have to be the same color as the the outside cookie itself they can all be different colors these these i think these are like the color wise the most creative cookies out there <laughs> i know that you can decorate other cookies to look the way that you want but these are decorated during the baking process which makes them pretty cool with all the varying colors so they sometimes they have different colored stuff in the middle of them and I don't even know what this middle stuff is but it's very delicious <laughs> and then we're going to be utilizing um, what are we going to do for the next step we're going to use this same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our cookies we're going to finish it with some highlights and putting on finishing our legs and all that good stuff. So I'm going to use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are all the colors I've already used in my cookies. So I'm going to be using blue, brown, the red, the green, the yellow, white is going to be a big color. And how I'm going to be doing this is I want these cookies to really kind of look three dimensional. So not only am I going to be putting a highlight from whatever that light source is, but I'm also going to be putting a highlight for the contour, which will be the part of the cookie that I want to pop out the most to the viewer. So it's going to be most likely in the center to the left area where I'm going to put the lightest of the light colors for each of them. So I'm going to start with my red cookies. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be utilizing that pre-mixed color, but if I want any of the area to be a little bit richer looking or a little bit lighter looking, if I want it to be richer, I can always pick up just that red. Same thing when I go into the yellow. If I'm doing the yellow highlights and fiddling with it, if I want any area to be have a little bit more richness to it, you can always just pick up that unmuted color, like you could pick up the unmuted red or the unmuted yellow or the unmuted green or the unmuted blue to give you a little bit more richness. So if I don't do it because I don't feel it in the process, you can do it on your end if you want to. So here I go. I'm going to start with my pre-mixed red plus the light red plus a little bit of white. So this is going to give me my lighter areas on that cookie where it's going to pop out the most. So I not only need to do it on the top portion of the cookie and the like the little edge of it, but I also need to put a little bit in the um, in the leg portion. <laughs> so I'm going to enhance the edges of where the leg goes into that darker area by just kind of tapping in these little polka dots of color. So on the soft cookie part, I'll be using a long brush stroke and where it meets the leg, I will be using a dotting type of brush stroke. So that's going to give you the, um, the variety in the texture of the cookies. So the cookies are typically smooth, so the top portion and the bottom portion, and then the, um, that where the legs hit, that's where you're going to get that little bit of a roughness. So I'm going to use my brightest color with my most white kind of in this region, and then I'm going to pick up my original um, cookie color to just get it to um, fade out. And again, I, I'm going in for it. I just picked up a little bit of red paint on my brush to give me a little bit more depth in this color here. So just a little bit of the real red, not the, um, not the pre-mixed lighter color. And that's how I can just kind of get these um, a little bit more dimension in them. So I know that I have smoothness to them, but if I want them to um, 
have any more depth to them, I can utilize that bright, the bright red, the original fire red to do so. So I'm going to go up to the other red cookie so we can kind of knock both of them out at the same time without washing our brush. So I picked up my um, dark pink plus my white to get this brightest area um, started. So somewhere in through here, in through here. I'm not really going to touch the inside of my cookie unless I feel the need to. So something like this will do will work and then I can just kind of tap it into the leg portion like this and then I will kind of finesse it around the rest of the cookie. So if you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, like right now I feel like I have a little bit too much paint on my brush, so I'm just going to wipe it off on my paper towel so I can get this to blend in pretty naturally. I'm going to pick up some of that original um, cookie color just to make sure that I've got it blend it in nicely in through here and then just make sure that I've got as much information as I want. So again, it's kind of a smooth paint stroke for the um, for the cookie portion <laughs> and a dotted, a dotted stroke for the leg portion. Probably never thought that we'd be talking about legs and cookies at the same time, I'm sure. <laughs> but add in these little kind of bits of um, uh, texture to the to the lid of the cookie boy these are some fun terminologies we're creating today I'm talking about cookies <laughs> so something like that will totally work just a little bit more finessing on this one in through here and just a nice transition from the um, smooth port part to the um, to those legs is totally fine so those are looking pretty good to me maybe a little bit more of the um, just the little edges of those legs. So you can always amp that up with a tiny bit of white paint on your brush just to get those little those little um, textured pieces to show up a little bit more if they're not showing up the way that the way that you want them to. So I'm gonna go on to my yellow one. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And I'm gonna be going into my base color, which is that light yellow plus white on my brush. So again, just gonna kind of give the contour of my cookie. So stripes on the um, soft part of the cookie, dots within the legs of the cookie. So solid in through here, solid in through here, and then kind of just dots throughout the legs. And then just get it to blend in with the rest of the cookie. So I'm going to pick up some of my light yellow and maybe a little bit of the um, original deep yellow as well just to get these to blend in a little bit make sure i have some good coverage and if i needed to or wanted to do anything additional i certainly would this is the time where you'd want to make sure all of your chalk mark is gone and if you need to um if you need to erase it with with um water you certainly can do do so just making sure i've got good coverage in through here and that my legs are doing everything that I want them to. So just getting this there, that's looking pretty good. So again, just those little kind of speckly edges as it meets um, that textured area, that's going to really make these look nice and natural and like they've got that texture in that spot that that is so desired from the baker who is baking them. So now that I've got that done, I'm gonna move on to my next cookie, which is gonna be my green one. So I'm gonna wash and dry my medium brush. I'm going in for my pre-mixed green plus white on my brush. And again, just following the same step, gonna do my lightness in through here, a little bit in through here, a little bit here, a little bit here. Then I'm gonna wipe my brush off, pick up some of my um, of my pre-mixed green for the cookie. Get this to just kind of blend out into those edges. Dot in my little legs in through here. Make sure that makes sense. So that's looking pretty good. And again, this is, you know, going to be sight. You know, take a look at, take a look at yours and it, step back. Sometimes when you're as close as I am, it's really tough to see all of the details that you're putting into the painting. So if you need to do a little bit of work, let it dry, step away from it, and look at it from a distance because it's really, like I said, it, sometimes it's just so tough to see all of the work that you're doing when you're sitting so close to it. So I know that my one of my things is 
I think that I've got enough detail on my paintings and then I walk away and it, and it, and it, I don't see all the effort or all the details that I, that I had put into it. So that usually means that I need to add a bit more contrast to certain areas or, you know, just amp up the intensity of the colors sometimes. So when you see it close up, you're seeing all the fine tuned detail, but then when you step away, you lose that, you know, that, that close visual so it's harder to see those details so sometimes you just want to make them a little bit more dramatic so I'm going to go up to that brown cookie so I'm going to wash and dry my brush for my brown I'm going in with my 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 milk chocolate brown color plus some white paint so again just kind of doing the same the same process giving myself maybe a little bit more on this left side maybe there's maybe as we get towards the top of our cookie stack this left side gets a little bit more especially since this is kind of lifted off a bit that'll make for a nice effect if I can get that to transition the way that I want it to so this is looking pretty good then I'm going to just wipe my brush off pick up some of that original um, cookie color the brown and just make sure that this kind of blends in nicely the way that I want it to work on dotting those those legs in there and again if you find that you you do something and it, it's not blending the way that you want just continue to work it there's you know the beautiful part about acrylic paint is you get to keep working it you get to keep even if it dries just paint over it you know there's no there's no time that it's too late you can always adjust it you can always rework it you can always paint over it so never get disappointed or feel like it's you're not going to be able to recover after you've done something that you might not be totally sold on because you can always keep re reworking it you know there's no there's no stopping point I'm going to just add some more of my little um, texture to these legs in through here and again I keep amping it up with a little bit more white on my brush just so we can get that that textured look throughout these these cookies and because I use the white with the um, the tan or the brown or the red or whatever else color I'm using it allows me to get varieties of tones so I'm not just going full on white I've got these uh, additional um, tones within there so it allows me to kind of reserve white for when I really want it. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush, go into the blue one. So again, I'm using my pre-mixed cookie blue plus white paint. This one's going to get a lot of a highlight on the top of it. So I'm just going to kind of start down in through here, get this started, go in through here, get this started, maybe start my, my dots in my legs, and then I'm going pretty white on the top. So I have a lot of white on my brush right now I really want this to look as though this this is the top cookie it is receiving the most light it is it's kind of steering the whole cookie party <laughs> and it's it's I don't know it's the top anchor it's it's the most balanced of them all so we can give it a lot of light and a lot of a lot of shine on the top of it and then once we've got all of our cookies done we're gonna start working on those details of our um, of our mouse and stuff so we're going to utilize um, I think we're going to utilize our mm, small brush for the next step so once you've got your cookies done you can put this medium brush away keep fiddling with these all you want you can always add more darkness into those legs too if you ended up doing something and it's feeling too dark or too light for you, you can always add more darkness into it. There's no, there's no rule that says that you can't do that. And then I'm gonna be utilizing my small brush for the next step, so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our spoon. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are black, brown, white, and my chocolate color. I don't know what I officially ended up calling that, but my brown cookie color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be um, kind of making myself a little bit of a indent in the center of the spoon. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a wood texture. I'm also gonna put a shadow on the left-hand side 
um, and a highlight kind of on the right hand side and maybe a little bit on the part that sticks out. You, I might, I might also put a little hole down here too. I don't know how I feel when I get to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush with my burnt umber and black. We'll reserve the wood grain or the wood color, the chocolate color for later. So just a little bit of brown plus black. This is going to give me my um, my divot in the spoon. So I'm just going to go a little bit from the left um, of the left of my spoon in through here, and just give myself kind of a oval type of shape in through here. You don't even have to go all the way up to the top. Think of this as just like a little shadowy type of area. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize that same color to give myself a little bit of wood grain. So you can put a little bit of water on your brush and just give yourself maybe these little swirls within this area so they can think of it just like the texture of wood maybe you have like a little hole or a little knot type of um mark you can also put with i'm continue to put water on my brush you can bring a couple of little pieces of wood grain down the base of it if you want to i wouldn't go overboard but you could certainly put a couple of like that don't go overboard like that <laughs> just wipe it away if you have to um just that water on your brush is going to help you to make it not go too overboard so that's looking pretty good i'm going to put a little circular or oval type of area down at the bottom I'm, i think i'm going to put a hole in the bottom because you need to hang up your spoon sometimes so we're going to just put a little bit of a circle i'm going to bring the background color in in a minute, but right now just kind of designating that area. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna start picking up the, um, the chocolate color plus white to give myself a little bit of a highlighted type of area. So again, I'm, I'm thinking wood grain as I'm doing this. So I'm not gonna go really uh, firm with my lines. I want them to look as if they're nice and natural and they're just little pieces of the wood that are being illuminated or are higher up than this center part in through here. So you might find that you want to use more of the brown or less of the brown, whatever works for you. I'm just putting a little bit up in through here so it again looks like it is popping out a little bit more than that center area and if you ever do anything that you feel is too much you can always just revert to the um, the original um, background color as well and then I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of it down in through here so this is just kind of speaking to my wood grain right now in a second I'm going to put a real big highlight on the right hand side so right now without washing my brush I'm picking up white paint and I'm going to give myself a bright highlight going down this right hand side so just kind of slowing down a little bit to provide myself with this nice um, highlight on this right hand side this will give it a little bit of dimension make it look feel look and feel a little bit three-dimensional so just kind of bring this down and again if you feel like you're going too light with it just pick up some of that um, base color and I'm just going to kind of sneak my way into this mouse in through here. I have white plus my tan or plus that chocolate on my brush right now so I can get a, a good um, soft line coming down in through here. I think it just grew a little bit but that's okay and then just bringing it down in a little curve here. I can put this same highlight right inside my hole right in through here. This is going to make that hole look a little bit more three-dimensional. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put um, black and brown on my brush, the burnt umber, so I can put a shadow over here on the left hand side. So black and brown is going to just bring this down this left hand side and again if you need the fluidity um, you can either add a little bit more water to your brush or liquid medium or whatever works for you. Bump right into your um, mouse if you have to. Bring it right past or inside these fingers in through here and then just bring it down this left hand side and if your background is darker than mine you might find that you want to use a little bit more black on your brush as opposed to the brown so wherever your uh, zone is and then I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow underneath it so I still just have that black and brown on my brush 
and I'm just gonna do a tiny little shadow right in through here just to make that look like it's three-dimensional and I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and pick up some of my background gray to color in this hole so this hole will look um, like we can see the um, background behind it so just that background gray coloring in my hole and that's looking pretty good to me so I'm going to be um, going on to my next step and I'm going to be utilizing this same small brush for the next step so once you get this done you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the pink areas on our mouse so I'm going to be using my small brush I'm going to be using red white um, probably my my light tan and white, I already said white, and maybe a little black and brown. <laughs> I'll call them out as I use them. So really what I'm going to do is, you, if you still have some of your cookie color, great. If not, no worries. I'm just adding a bit more white to it. So I want my pink to be not super light, but definitely lighter than my cookie color. Um, you can always continue to adjust it. You can make it lighter or darker, however... Uh, whatever shade of pink is appealing to you but I don't I just didn't want it to be too overpowering so that's why I'm kind of going on the lighter side so once you've got the shade of pink that you're looking for you don't need a lot on your brush just a I can even just wipe it off on my paper towel I'm gonna go in for some areas on the nose the hands the feet the ear and the tail so when I do the nose I'm gonna bring it all the way to the end of my chalk mark and then I rub it out so it just kind of dissipates into that gray. I'm also gonna put it a little bit on, we'll call it our mouse mouth. <laughs> I don't know if mice have pink mouths, but I thought that it would look cute to have a little pink bottom lip, so that's what my mouse is getting. So he's got a pink nose and a pink lip. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the ear. So the ear, I'm going to bring my pink all the way to the edge and this is you can get you can take care of your chalk mark at this point I'm going to bring this all the way to the edge I'm also going to bring it into the body just a little bit so get rid of the chalk mark bring it into the body just a little bit and then get it to kind of fade into that gray again you can just keep wiping your brush off on your paper towel so you have a little bit on your on your brush and then I'm going to while I'm here I'm going to put a little bit of um, darkness in the middle so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and black without washing my brush so I can get the little part that goes inside the head <laughs> to start to appear so I'll put a little bit there I just wipe in my brush off on my paper towel and I'm just gonna kind of gently rub it out so even if you have a little bit of pink left on your brush that's great that's gonna make it look really nice and natural and then I'm gonna um, I'll put a little highlight on the ear in a minute but I just wanted to get that little shadow in there I'm gonna wash and dry my brush right now and I'm gonna put that pink back on my brush for my hands and my feet and my tail so uh, again when it meets the the body just like the ear I kind of want it to have a natural type of entry so I'm gonna kind of leave it nice and rough where it meets the body in through there as if there's maybe fur um, covering the edge of it and then as I come down the tail if I don't cover up all of that gray that's underneath it or that light tan that's underneath it that's okay it provides a great base it provides a nice natural look to it I do want to try and make sure I get rid of all my chalk mark but if I still see some of that light tan underneath that's awesome so I'm going to move right on to my feet. So my feet, I'm going to have this one kind of coming into the body a little bit. So I would say maybe about halfway into the body. Just bring this down to the edge. So this is kind of like his leg foot kind of thing, I guess. <laughs> and then I'm going to just give a couple of little toes. So just kind of curling them over like that. And again not a mouse foot expert so I don't even know how many toes they have so we're just gonna go for three if they have more I apologize to all the all the mice out there who have more or less than three toes I think they probably have like a little 
uh, other one that we can't see, but as far as the main number, I'm not quite sure. Same thing with the fingers. We're gonna guess at the fingers. So I'm putting, I'm gonna have pink arms. So I've got pink in through here, and I'm just bringing it back in a diagonal way about halfway into the body. We're gonna have an elbow in there in a little bit, but right now this just kind of colors our forearm our little mouse forearm. He's gonna have some fingers in through here. And again, don't worry about covering up all of that base coat. This, if you have a little bit showing, that's gonna provide more of a, um, more of a natural look to it. So I've got this little thumb in through here, and then I've got the wrist, and then I've got these little three fingers in through here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of a highlight to them all. So just uh, wiping my brush off, picking up a tiny bit of white paint, giving myself a little little highlight on the tip of this nose in through here, something like that. So just a teeny bit of white. Same thing with here, a little tiny bit of white paint in through there, a little tiny bit on the um, tail. So again, just a little bit of white paint is gonna provide me with these bits of highlights on the, on the pink areas. And again, same thing with the arm, with the arm and through here. So just a little bit of white. Oh, I got to put a little bit on the ear too. So a little bit of white. And again, I'm just kind of like streaking in these little bits of highlights so they look pretty natural. And I'll do the same thing for the ear, just giving myself a little bit of white. And if you still have some pink on your brush, great. Just kind of work it on in. That's what's going to make it look nice and natural. A little bit on them feet. So a touch of white paint, and I'm just kind of putting it like on the on the tops of them. So we have just a little bit of a highlight in through here, touch it, and then I'm gonna, um, I think I'll, I'll save the shadow area underneath them for um, when I do the shadow on the body. So I think that's all I'm gonna do for my pink areas right now. You can fiddle with them. We'll use the small brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our hat and our cute little eye. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, white, and probably my base um, tan color as well. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna put a little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time, and I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath my hat. So I've got Oh, I'm gonna do a little mouth too. So we'll do hat, eye, and mouth too. So I've got a little bit of brown and black on my brush. I'm gonna underline where the hat rim is gonna go so it looks like there's a little bit of a shadow underneath the rim of the hat and just kind of getting that into place. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint. I'm gonna put the base coat for my eye. So I'm just gonna have my eye right about in through here. It's gonna be, I would say, maybe about a half of an inch wide by a half of an inch tall, or a quarter of an inch, somewhere around there. You can make your eye as big or as small as you want, something like that. While I have this color on my brush, I'm gonna put a teeny bit of an interior of the mouth, so just a tiny bit of the um, brown and black on my brush, just giving them just this little itty bit of a interior of the mouth, maybe a little kind of grin to him because he's so happy that he's looking at all these beautiful cookies that he gets to eat. So while I have this darkness on my brush, I'm gonna put the um, some little detail on the hat where the flat part or the front part of the hat meets the top part. So I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness in through here and give myself kind of a little edge to the hat so it almost looks maybe pleated at the top part and at this bottom part has a little bit of, um, I don't know, movement to it, I guess. Picking up some of that light tan color on my dirty brush to get this to blend in a little bit in through here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up on my dirty brush a little bit of brown and a touch of black and I'm really kind of working my dark areas on this hat right now. So these are kind of shadowy type of areas that are going to speak to the um, the form of the hat where it kind of ripples and maybe it's hiding behind the ear a little bit. Um, I, I'm doing this so there's a little bit of movement in the hat. Once I've got it kind of in those shadows in place, I'm gonna pick up some of that light tan just to make sure that this the shadowy area kind of works well 
with um, the base coat of it and then you can kind of make any little dark areas that you want in order to get this to really look like it's got some um, some ripples to it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush I'm going to finish up that eye while it's because uh, it's nice and dry so I just put a little bit of white paint on my brush I'm going to put a couple of little sparkles in the eye so just a couple of little dot sparkles I'm going to put a little white crescent at this bottom left hand portion of the um, of the eye so that gives us the idea that he's looking up and then I'm going to put a touch of that um, gr uh, the light tan plus brown on my brush just to kind of give myself the exterior maybe a little um, little tiny fur behind that eye now I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a little bit of white paint on my brush to get the highlight of this hat going. So I want the highlight to be over on this top side of the hat and then I get it to um, go on this rim a little bit and then just get it to fade over into this darker side. So white paint on my brush is going to get this beautiful highlight on the top part of my hat and then I just get it to fade down into that um, the original color. So the, what I'm in essence doing is giving the viewer the information as to what part of the hat is popping out the most and closest to the light source. So it doesn't have to be a straight line. This is fabric so it can have a lot of movement to it. I just picked up some of that original tan plus white on my brush just to make sure that these um, blend in well together and if you had any areas that you felt you wanted a little bit it to pop out a little bit more you just put a little bit more lightness so if I want this part to pop out a little bit more I just put a little bit more lightness on my brush and then just kind of get it to fade down into the other part and then I just make sure everything talks well together maybe a little bit of extra um, soft layer on top of some of the pieces and then if you feel like you have anything additional to do, you can certainly do it. But we're going to be switching to our, um, no, let's use our small brush. We'll use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our mouse. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, my light tan, and white and if I use any other colors I'll let you know so really what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the shadows and the highlights on the fur to uh, get this arm to kind of pop out get the leg to pop out and we also need to add a couple of little shadows underneath the feet the tail and the hands so I'm going to start excuse me start with my shadowy areas so I'm going to put a little bit of dark brown plus a touch of black on my brush I'm going to put some shadows underneath these um, legs and the feet so just a little bit of black and brown will get that going and again you can certainly when you're doing these shadows on on the surface you can certainly add a touch of water onto your brush that will always help you to get a nice um, fluidity into that into those um, shadows I'm going to bring this up just a little bit so there's a little bit more of a shadow in this area so it implies that the butt is up a little bit so something like that and you can also maybe wiggle it into the fur a little bit so there's not such a clean line I'm going to bring this back underneath the tail portion only here then I skip this area and I'll put it underneath the bottom section of the tail here so this will um, tell the viewer that this is the top of the tail, this is the bottom, and then this is the top, and then that's the bottom. I'm going to lift or put this shadow away from the tip of the tail, so it looks like the tip of the tail is off the ground a little bit. And then I'm just going to bring this shadow right underneath the tail here. And then as soon as I want it to start curving the corner, just, just make that shadow go smaller around the edge and through there. So I need to put a little shadow in between these toes. So just a teeny bit of the black and the brown. I'll put a little bit underneath this foot in through here. And again, I don't think the details are super important on these little toes, but if you feel they are, you can certainly make yours a little bit more 
um, detailed than mine. I'm just reloading my brush with a little bit of black and brown so I can get a touch of shadow underneath this hand onto the um, spoon itself and then maybe a little bit between these fingers something like that and again tiny bit of water on your brush I just keep putting a tiny bit of water on my brush so I can have nice fluidity and give myself these nice clean little lines bringing a little bit of shadow in between those ones maybe underneath this thumb that looks a little funky hold on I need a little pink sorry adding a little pink for this thumb he needs he needs a thumb that looks a little bit bigger than that there we go that looks better all right, so washing and drying my brush, I'm gonna put some um, shadow underneath this arm. So I'm going for my brown and black, but I, again, I don't need a lot. So I put a little bit of water on my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow that's going to, in essence, kind of outline but this arm so oops I wasn't looking <laughs> so this is going to tell the viewer where that elbow is I also want to do the same thing for the for the knee so I'm gonna if this is about halfway left to right in my um, animal I'm gonna come a little bit to the right of that and then I'm just gonna bring this around like this now please remember this is an imaginary mouse he is an illustrated mouse he's probably not anatomically correct I'm not trying to make him anatomically correct so if you feel that you want to put yours in a little bit different of a position feel free to do so there's no there's no mouse police gonna gonna scold you for it then I'm gonna go ahead and continue my shadow at the um, bottom of the belly in through here and this is going to just kind of work its way up into the brighter part of the um, belly so this is just brown and black and I'm really just kind of rubbing it into the canvas right now so it works its way up into this lighter region and we'll put a little bit of lighter um, fur on that in a minute I have the brown and the black and I'm going to um, outline the uh, shoulder and the um, the forearm of the of the little cute mouse so something like this going to give myself kind of a curved line in through here and then this is just going to all be kind of shadowed underneath here as well to um, from the head into the chest kind of area something like this so once I've got my shadowy areas I've identified the arm here's my head I've got my leg and my belly now I just I'm gonna work my way towards the light so I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel so I don't have too much black I'm picking up some of my original um, light tan color to make sure that these areas just talk well together and then once I've got them to talk well together then I will put my my bright mouse highlights <laughs> so just getting this in through here to kind of work its way towards that light and I just like everything to naturally look like it goes together maybe there's a little bit of a shadow underneath this ear in through here and then um, that's looking so cute to me all right I'm going in I'm gonna wash and dry my brush I'm gonna go in for the lighter areas so wash and dry my brush my lighter areas are gonna be made up of that light tan plus white so I have light tan plus white on my brush right now and I want my mouse to look kind of fluffy so you'll you'll notice I'm gonna tap my brush a lot especially around the edges of where the fur kind of um, shows itself the most I can also use more white when I want it to bump out even more so I just brought a little bit extra white when it meets like the pink areas you can do these little pieces of fur kind of like the legs on our cookies you can make these little kind of lighter areas that'll make it look like it is um, like little pieces of fur almost overlapping that um, that pink area and you can dot it you can swirl it I'm using a really small brush so this helps me to kind of just give myself a lot of texture within that within the fur so um, light tan plus white is where I'm at right now for my arm so just kind of highlighting this arm so it really pops out and if you want a white mouse you can really elevate this this light tan to as white as you want I put a little bit more white on my brush to give myself perhaps a little um, highlight of fur on the back of my mouse and also down by this tail making sure it meets that tail nicely 
and then just kind of rubbing it in so it um, works with the rest of the fur in that area. I'm gonna make sure that I've this all talks together. Make sure my belly has a little bit of a little bit of that lightness. You can make your belly look really nice and full if you give it a nice bright highlight and, <laughs> and have it looking like it's popping out quite a bit. That'll help it to look like he's probably eaten more of those cookies than he's baked. So something like that. And then same thing on the cheek. I really want this part of my cheek to be nice and vibrant and look like it's popping out quite a bit. So I'm gonna use more of that white plus just a tiny bit of my base color in order to get it there. And then I'm just gonna kinda of keep fiddling with this, making sure, maybe this goes all the way over into there. Just making sure this, this cute cheek just pops out a little bit and if you find that you know you're going about it and you're like well that just looks like a white circle on my canvas what you'll want to do is just make sure that it's blending well with the neighboring colors and if you want your your cute mouse to be lighter or darker or you know you just keep adjusting it until you get those um, brightness and the values and stuff that you want. I'm adding a little bit more white fur right around this ear in through here so again it look, gives it that little textured look in through there and I think I want this little cheek to be a little bit brighter and more filled with cookies I guess and then I just need to make sure that it, it blends in with the rest of it and then you just kind of keep tweaking and making sure everything is doing what you want it to maybe I need a little bit more shadow down here or you know just keep fiddling with it and once you've got it in the way that you want we're going to use this small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and oh, he's so cute. You can wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some whiskers. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna just be using brown and white. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna load my brush with brown paint and I'm gonna make a ton of tiny little polka dots right um, near the nose area. So just these really itty bitty tiny little dots is all I'm doing in through here just to have the authenticity of whisker holes where we want those whiskers to come out of. So once I've got that in place, I'm gonna wash and dry my small brush and then I'm gonna be using white paint to put my whiskers on. So I want my brush to be really in control. So what I like to do is take my brush and spin it in my paint on the side of my palette. That's gonna bring my brush nice and pointy. And then when I do this, the biggest tip I can give you is don't push hard. <laughs> so I also use my hand to brace myself so I don't push too hard um, into my canvas. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take from some of these whisker holes and bring out a little bit of white paint and try not to push hard. <laughs> So something like this. You don't need a ton of them. Just a few will work just to give the implication that we have a couple of little whiskers coming out of here. And that's all I'm going to be doing. So we're going to be using that small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna go bottom right on this one with some black paint You can and small brush. You can certainly sign yours wherever you want to. Um, I use my initials, but you could use your first name or the date or a symbol or anything else that you'd like for your identifying mark to be. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cute edible mouse image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.